Still got rooms, huh? So, uh, good evening once again, guys. For those of you who have not heard my good evening uh, earlier. So, so, today's message, okay, it's a very um, a hard topic what people call it. Okay? I don't think it is very hard because if you only take a stand on the Bible, it's very clear and crisp what the Bible says. How many of you heard the term called once said, always said? Do you know this phrase or statement? You heard about this? How many of you heard about this? Once said, always said. How many of you believe that it is true? That's fine. You can be a believer of this statement. Once said, always said. Now this is something that has gotten into churches and has paralyzed many ministers and ministries and has, it has paralyzed even the Christian community so that the world is now looking at us and laughing. Because of this one thing, uh, the, this you can call it a doctrine or a teaching which has gotten into the church as a subtle servant. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to see plainly from the scriptures and you can decide for yourself that is a false teaching. Yeah? To be honest, 80% of the church believe that once said, is always said. I recently had a pastor who spoke that one said is always said. We debated, there was another pastor that we debated. Even he said, one said, always said is true. And uh, I believe this has come from the Western Christian world. Okay? So, because there's a lot of uh, immorality there. They would like to flow with this. Calling it once said, always said, just to cover up their own sins and lust and greed. Yeah? So, is it biblical? Is what we are going to look into. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Please note down. You know, there are a lot of verses which would uh, come up on the screen. So this would be helpful for you, okay? So, in Hebrews, it is actually giving us a warning for what happened to the people of Israel while they were coming out of Egypt. Okay? Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience. You see, they have been proclaimed the good news. But they did not go in. The promised land is nothing but heaven. I mean, today's, uh, uh, if, you, if you can go biblically, it is. The, the, uh, the promised land is nothing but heaven. We are looking for a citizen which is from above, the Bible says, right? How many of you believe? Uh, how many of you remember that? How many of you believe that promised land is not the physical land God was giving them? Yeah? And they did not enter because of their disobedience. God again set a certain day, calling it today, in other words, in another covenant which is Jesus Christ himself. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David as in the passage already quoted. Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. In other words, the new covenant.
Hebrews chapter 4, 11 it says, Let us therefore make this every effort to enter that rest. For the people of Israelites, the rest was Sabbath. Okay? The true rest is nothing but heaven, eternity. And God wants us to enter that rest. So that no one will be no one will perish and uh, by following their example of disobedience. Whose example? The Israelites' example. God has used their disobedience to show us as an example for not entering eternity or heaven. Yeah? So this is something I just want you to give a glimpse of what happened uh, with the people of God. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 it talks about warning from the life of Israelites. Okay, pay very close attention. Why I'm trying to bring the Old Testament verses, you know, trying to compare it because you'll understand it later. Okay? For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them and that was Christ. Yeah. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in wilderness. How many of you remember that out of the multitudes, how many made to the promised land? Only two. Caleb and Joshua. Yeah? Why? If they all drank from the same uh, water, which is actually the rock represents Christ, why did they perish? And God, and you know, Paul is writing here, and God is actually, to be honest, it is actually God warning through Paul that we need to take heed from the lifestyle of the Israelites. So now these things occur as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things. You see, God has recorded all those things, the disobedience, what the Israelites have done as an example so that we will not behave like them or set our hearts on evil things. So, why the Old Testament? It's a reminder for us to not to behave like them. So, it says, these people sat down, eat and drink and got up and indulged in revelry. What is revelry? It's a, non, it's a noisy gathering, probably if you go to the DJ party. You know, that's what it says. Now these are the okay. It says the people sat down to eat and drink and got up and indulged in a revelry. No, when, when was that happened? It happened when Moses went onto the mount. Okay? And it took late for him to come down by the time they did all these things. They could not wait on God. They made their own God and they indulged in. You see, a lot of churches today do enjoy like this revel. The dance with all smoke, lights up, great music, and they still think it's worship. Yeah? It's nothing but revel in God's sight. You do not use the name of Jesus for your own entertainment. commit sexual immorality. You see, once they got indulged in such revelry, probably a DJ of music or a club or a pub, what you think in the school, the next thing they did was sexual immorality. You see, one sin after the other, one sin leads to other. 
That's why I keep shouting, and you know, brother Samuel also keeps shouting that we are not supposed to listen to the song of fools. The Bible says, "Then how much more we are not supposed to dance?" People think it is cool to go and dance in clubs and pubs. I don't know. Many of you probably, some of you or few of you would go and dance tomorrow, as it is going to be a Valentine's Day. Yeah. Don't be a fool. The Bible says, to be honest. Boyfriend and girlfriend and lovers, it's not biblical, guys. For Christians, the Bible says, "He who finds a wife finds favor." It doesn't say he who finds a boyfriend or a girlfriend. In fact, the word "lover" is always connected in the Bible to a prostitute. You want to give me some examples? How many of you remember Ezekiel chapter twenty-three? God compares Samaria. Can someone read it? I want someone to read. Take the mic and read it so that you will believe that I'm not trying to make up things here. The Bible says, "He who finds a wife finds favor from God." It says even in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter twenty-three, uh, verse five. Uh, Every time, you know, God compared His people with there are two women that is comparing. He's comparing Samaria and twenty-three. Yeah, twenty-three and verse. Or uh, you can actually read from verse four. Their names are Ola and Elder. And Oliva, her sister, okay. they were mine, and they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Oliva, and Jerusalem is Oliva. So he is comparing Samaria and Jerusalem to two women who were prostitutes. Okay. And uh, further down in chapter, um, in verse five, please. Uh, Ahuna played the harlot, even though she was mine, and she lusted for her lovers. Her lovers, you see, she lusted after her lovers. Who? This prostitute. So the word, the term lovers, is not good for Christians. The lovers, what you try to see from this world, are not a good cool thing. They are deception, only to keep you away from God, so that you will end up in eternal hell. So don't think Valentine's Day is cool. No, it is a trap for you. The world will celebrate it. I know you can take this as a warning. I know so many uh, youngsters. Even I don't call their names because they'll be watching me live. <laughs> so I know youngsters, girls, and boys. Even from my own family members. One of my girl close friends. Christians ended up marrying someone they just wanted. There was a girl. There was a just a girl. So she wanted to marry this person. She married. The parents said, "No, this is not the right person for you." Probably God was warning through her parents. She said, "That's fine. I will take care. I will change." She married. Not even five years. She passed away. And she and uh, they left a child completely uh, handicapped. I know so many things, so so many testimonies who went against God. There are other people that I know. They got married. The husband left not even three months. There was another guy that I know. He was a It was a big time flirt. He was just trying out girls. One fine day, he did marry one girl, and now after being married, she flirts with other guys, other men. And this guy is compromised. He's living in a compromised lifestyle. So don't think it is one said, always said. Most of the Christians believe just because I. Confess the name of Jesus and believe in Him. No matter what I do, I still go to heaven. That is evil. You will see that. 
Okay? So the moment they indulged in, in uh, rebel really probably like DJ dancing or club dancing, the next thing they went was sexual immorality. You just go, I, I'm not telling this just very, you just go and see the lifestyle of secular singers, they will end up marrying two, two times or three times and they will be having you know, multiple boyfriends and girlfriends. You know why? Because they keep singing all these uh, Song of Fools, the Bible says. It's better to hear a wise man's rebuke than to listen to the Song of Fools. Here they were dancing, the next thing they did was coming to the door. As some of them did, and in, and in one day 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes and do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by destroying angels. So are you grumbling guys when your pastor is calling for church? Uh, are you grumbling when um, Things are not going as per your way. The Bible says there will be an angel who is ready to strike. That is not a joke. I know, I know so many, I don't know why God gave me all these experiences, I think, to only to preach at this. These things happen to them as examples again. As examples and they are written down as warnings to us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So all these things are a warning to us. So let's see some light examples in the Bible. Okay? These are purely New Testament. Okay, we will say if there is one say, what we say. If you are intelligent enough, you can say it is not. So First Timothy chapter three, uh, First Timothy chapter three, verse six says it actually lists down the characteristics of a of a teacher or a deacon or someone who has to minister before God. Okay? So it says, I just want to give you that particular verse, it says, he must be, okay, he must be a recent convert. He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. Who is the convert? Recent convert? He's a Christian. He's a saved person. Okay, the Bible says, if that person gets into ministry without the word, knowledge of the word, that's what the conclusion is. He can be, what? Fall. And fall, fall as the same judgment as the devil. If that person is saved, why is he being judged? You're getting this, right? Every Christian is saved, right? Whether he is a nominal Christian or someone who is an extraordinary or someone who is a minister he is still a saved person, right? In God's sight he is one saved yeah? Recent converts is nothing but one saved but if he becomes a minister without the knowledge of the world the Bible says there is a danger of judgment as the devil which means one saved is not always saved yeah? That's a live example there in the Bible so don't take it so lightly. So Acts chapter 8 verse 9 to 13, okay? Okay, pay close attention. It's a very good showing one of most of us would remember, right? Now for some time a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and ex exclaimed, This man was rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself baptized, believed and was baptized. What happened? Simon the sorcerer, the magician, he believed the gospel well. Who preached? Philip preached. Right? What happened? It says, Simon himself believed and was baptized. 
Is he saved? Believed and baptized? Yeah? Believe upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Yeah? Go ahead and baptize them. Which means he is saved, right? Saved? Yes? Saved? Let's go further. Acts chapter 8, same chapter, from verse 18 to 24. When Simon was, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hand, they offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. You know, straight away Peter said, May your money perish with you. In the previous verses, we, we see that he is saved. Now here, he has come to a point where he would perish. Which means, one said, always there is not. Peter said that, not me. That's Peter who said, who walked and talked and ate and ran with Jesus. Okay? So I don't want to read furthermore. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 The acts of the flesh are obvious Sexual immorality, impurity and debauching Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy Fits of rage, selfish ambition Dissension, faction and envy, drunkenness, orgies and, and alike okay? the, I warn you as I did before To whom is warning? Is he warning to Non-believers? No, right? Galatians was a letter written to Galatian believers, Galatian church. Yeah? If he is writing to a church, which means they are saved. But he is telling here, I warn you as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is that one said always say? He is writing it to church, which means church is saved, right? He's warning them, if you live like this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now people tell that inheritance is different. It's like things of the kingdom of God. No, no, no. <laughs> just imagine God is trying to fall, you know, make people fall just for the things on the, you know, in the heaven. That is, which means you will, you will not be saved. That's what it means. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 to 8 It is God's will that you should be sanctified That you should avoid sexual immorality That each of you should learn to control his own body In the way that is holy and honorable And not in passionate lust like pagans who do not know God And that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of of a brother or sister, the Lord will punish those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to, to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, this is the highlighter. Therefore, if anyone rejects this instruction, does not reject. Man but God. If you reject God, where will you be? You're not rejecting God by your action or by words. If you do anything which is written above there, the Bible says you are rejecting Him. You're not rejecting man, but you're rejecting God. If you reject God, where will you be? Yeah? So one said, always said is not. Biblical. You are clear so far? You will be as we go further. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. If we, okay, pay, pay close attention. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth. Who received the knowledge of truth? The person who is saved. Right? No sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful 
expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Where will you end up if you trample the Son of God underfoot? Who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of his covenant? You see, when we continue to sin, the Bible says, you are trampling the blood of Jesus. Do you think you will you be in heaven by doing that? Is that one said always said? Yet how many of Christians believe that? That they are going to heaven? I know so many people who have even died living a sinful lifestyle, not even believe it. They don't, some people don't even confess their sins. The Bible says, if you confess, he is faithful if condition which means we need to humble ourselves he is king of kings lord of lords we cannot just say that oh okay we can just go like that he demands humbleness yeah James chapter 4 verse 4 you are not just people don't you know that the friendship with this world means enmity to God. Most of you youngsters think that you know you have great friends. You're constantly texting and being on Facebook and you know, Instagram posting things about your friends. You even take pride of having certain friends, maybe good-looking friends or someone who has a great name or a talent. The Bible says you are enemy to God. They are not your friends, they are a trap for you to take you to hell. That's what it is. It says anyone who chooses to be a friend of this world becomes an enemy of God. Now James is writing to whom? Adulterous people. Yeah, adulterous people. And it says if you choose, if you choose world, you become an enemy of God. Where should I mean enemy of God and the Right. So this was written to who? Yes. Us. That's right. Us. So no one said, always said. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Or do you think, or do you know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by the teachings of the one said, always said, by, uh, you know, what is that called, grace, uh, extreme grace, what is that called, hyper grace, hyper grace, neither the sexual immoral nor, uh, nor uh, idolaters, nor the, uh, nor the men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God that is plain. The world will say inclusion by LGBT, but God says they will be expelled. You may take pride, you know, taking stand. I know there are Christians who put up this uh, uh, rainbow flags on their uh, profile pictures, thinking that they are, you know, doing good to the world, but they were leaving the world into hell. It's not inclusion, it's exclu exclusion when it comes to Bible. Yeah? But you were washed, you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. It's, again, it's written to a believer. How many of you know that we already have, you know, transgender pastors? There are many Christians who listen to them, go to their churches, they think God is using them. The Bible says very clearly here. That they will not inherit the kingdom of God. If the pastor will not inherit the kingdom of God, then what do you, what do you have guaranteed the congregation? Because they supported someone who is against the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5, uh, verse 5 to 6. For this you can be sure. He's telling you, you can be sure of this. Don't doubt it. 
is that you can be sure, don't have another question or doubt. No immoral, impure or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you, see? Let no one deceive you, let no one deceive you. It comes one after the other verse. One after the other book. Let no one deceive you with the so-called teaching as one said or less said. Deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Yeah? In other words, someone who preaches one said or less said, we do not be partners with them. Yeah. Matthew chapter 4 verse uh, 24 verse 50 to 51 The master of that servant now We all know that when it's talking about a faithful servant right? How many of you know that? This parable Yeah, it is a parable where uh, uh, A faithful servant needs to Be alert Exactly, be alert When the master is about to Return before his return. It says, the master of that servant will be on that day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Who is the master here? Jesus Christ, right? And who is the servant? Does Jesus Christ appoint Servants who are non-believers? No. Who is the servant? You and me, Christians. Especially preachers. Because they are not getting the food on time. That's what the whole you know, conclusion is. They are not giving food on time. In other words, they are not giving the true word of God. So the servant is someone who saved the person, right? But when he finds him, not doing his duty, he is not alert, probably. It says, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with hypocrites. Who? The master, Jesus Christ, will assign him a place with hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, some believe weeping and gnashing of teeth is a lesser heaven. The Bible clearly says that when you enter eternity, he will wipe away all your tears. Right? It's, it's, it says weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah? So which means that servant was sent to hell. So one say, always say this not be given. Yeah? So Matthew chapter 25 verse 29 to 30 For whatever For whoever has a will Will be given more and They will have an abundance And whoever does not have Even what they have will be taken from them And throw And, and throw that worthless servant outside Into the darkness where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth who is that worthless servant? It is talking about the parable of talents. Yeah? So here we see again the servant will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Normally if God gives you something, you know, to keep, whether it's a talent or a money or whatever, God is giving you, and you're not faithful to it, what does it say? He's giving it to you to believer, he doesn't give it to a believer, right? He's giving it to a believer. So he gave it to a believer there, which means he was saved at one point in time. Later on, he lost his salvation. Yeah? Getting this right? You know, Sam was telling that wonderful verse where it says, uh, You cannot be cold or lukewarm. I mean, you, you, you should either be cold or hot, lukewarm, I will spit you out. 
You know what it says? Have you ever spit something from your mouth? So when you spit, do you take it back with you? Did you ever try to collect your spit and take it back with you? That's what Jesus said. When I spit you out, which means you're not going to take it. That's what it means. So we cannot be cold and lukewarm. We want to be hot for Jesus. Yeah? So no one say or this say. If anyone abide not in me, he shall be cast forth as a branch and shall wither and they shall gather him up and cast him into the fire and he burned. Now this verse we all know it's talking about Jesus being the vine and we are the branches. right? And if we do not remain in him, he said he is going to pluck us up yeah? and throw us. Have you ever heard that people we just say that Jesus will not send anyone to hell? All these verses Jesus is sending people to hell. Yeah? So when Jesus came, he came as the Lamb of God. When he's coming, the second time, he's coming as a King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which means he's coming for a war. King is not coming to just humble himself this time. He's coming for a war. He's coming to change. You know, he's going to separate people. People of this world and people of, of his kingdom. Okay? That is the very reason I'm bringing this teaching. Okay? So, so far, what do you think? One said, always said, is it biblical? By these verses? No? We both, some of you, I think, are still in confusion. Yeah? Now I'll give you certain verses I want you to read from your uh, Bible. Okay? Last one verse. Revelation, these are all New Testament verses what I gave. Revelation chapter 3. This is Jesus, okay? So here Jesus is giving letters to the seven churches. And he's telling one of the churches in Sardis, okay? Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Can someone read? Remember therefore what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I have come to you. Yeah. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who are not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy. Mm -hmm. The one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life. But yeah. I will acknowledge that name before yeah. my father and his That's angels. It. Whose name you will not blot out? The one who is victorious. In other words, the one who overcomes, he will not blot out. He is writing to the churches, right? Which means he will blot out those Names who will not overcome. Right? Yeah? How many of you remember that Judas' uh, name was written in heaven? Jesus said, when, when he sent out the 70, there were also 12 disciples, right? You remember that? He said, Do not get excited about the miracles and all, but be happy that your names are written in heaven. That means even Judas' name was written there. Yeah? So Judas name was in other words, let me tell you one thing. Your names are written in heaven even before the foundations of the earth was made. God is not writing people's name because they have confessed Jesus. God has already written people even before they were believers. Because God so loved the world, God wants everyone to say, He's already written everybody's names. Because of their rejection of Him, He's going to blot it out. That's what it says here. He already has people's name in the book. Everybody's name. The moment they are born, their names are written. Only the, uh, only the name is being striked off because 
they reject Jesus and they disobey, disobey him. So even Judas' name was written, but therefore he still lost his soul. So just because your name is written in heaven doesn't mean that you are saved. The Bible says, if you overcome, that's when I will not blot it out. Amen? That is Jesus said. So let's pray this. Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful time that you have given us through your word to see this deception of Father of one saved, always saved is not the biblical word. Help us to remember these words and to keep them into practice. We pray Lord Jesus that we may walk in fear and in obedience to your word so that none of us of Father, God Lord Jesus, would be blotted out from the from your book. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.